Hello curious learners. Today we are going to be solving for the variable of x using cross multiplication. So first off I'm going to explain why we would use cross multiplication then I'll show an example. So cross multiplying what it is is it is a universal way for solving equivalent fractions. So you see these two fractions 12 over 60 equals 5 over x. They are equivalent fractions because they have that equal sign in the middle. And you can solve this using cross multiplying. Cross multiplying, the reason I like it is because it will always work. Always work. There are other methods. There are other methods that are sometimes faster. But cross multiplying will work no matter what your fraction is. And it's it's quicker than some methods, it's slower than others, it's right about the middle as far as speed goes, but it's 100% accurate. So I like this method. If you want to learn just one method and be able to solve all equivalent fraction problems, this is the method that you want to do. So let's look at what cross multiplying is or how it works. Here's an example. If I have 12 over 60 is equal to 5 over x. I'm going to do cross multiplying. That means I multiply the numbers that are across from each other, kitty corner from each other, on diagonals from each other, whatever word you like. So I'm going to multiply 12 times x and 60 times 5. See how that works? The x and the 12 were across from each other, so I'm multiplying them. The 60 and the 5 were across from each other, I'm multiplying them. It doesn't matter what order I write them in, it could be x times 12 or 5 times 60. The order does not matter, and it doesn't matter which side of the equal sign you put them on. All right, it, th That is all just unimportant. The, the important thing is that the numbers that are opposite each other or across from each other are being multiplied times each other. So 12 times x gives me 12x, and 60 times 5 is equal to 300. We're going to go over here to give ourselves a little bit more space. I have the same equation, 12x equals 300. Now, this is a one-step multiplication equation. The way I would solve it is to say, where's my variable? x is my variable. And what is connected to x? 12 is being multiplied times x. So to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by x, or by 12, leaving me with x on the left, and 300 divided by 12 gives me 25. Those are the steps for solving a problem using cross-multiplying. Also, once you have an answer, you can check your work using the same method. So I'm going to substitute the answer that I have, 25, back into this equation. Is 12 over 60 equal to 5 over 25? Well, I'm going to do my cross multiplying. Write it down over here. 12 times 25 and 5 times 60. Notice I changed the order. I did that on purpose to show you it doesn't matter if I do 25 times 5 or, or 25 times 12 or 12 times 25. Doesn't matter. 60 times 5, 5 times 60, doesn't matter. The arrows I'm putting in there don't matter. As long as you're multiplying the numbers that are across from each other, and you'll notice that you have that 300 is equal to 300 at the end. Okay. So we can check our work using cross-multiplying. Um, notice if it was 60 times 5 instead of 5 times 60, you would have gotten the same answer. So we can check our work and know that they are equivalent fractions because the numbers across from each other multiply out to give us the same answer. Now, I want to show you a quick shortcut. This is what we had before, right? This is the original equation that we solved using cross multiplying. My shortcut is to cut out a lot of these steps because the steps are going to be the same every single time. I'm going to take the two numbers that are across from each other, and I'm going to multiply those numbers. Then I'm going to divide by whatever number is left. So my three numbers are the important part here. The x value, that's the part we're trying to solve for. So you multiply the numbers that are across from each other. Notice we did that, 60 times 5. And then you divide by whatever's left. 60 times 5 was our 300, and we divided by the 12. So to save us a little bit of writing and to save us having to 
solve a multiplication fraction equation every single time, we're just going to follow those three steps, or two steps, I guess. We'll multiply the numbers that are across from each other and divide by the other number that's left. It's cross multiplying. In this question, we're going to solve 12 over 15 is equal to x over 10. We're going to follow those same steps, multiply the numbers that are across from each other, and divide by the other number. So, a quick way to find out what numbers are across from each other is to just take a look. 15 is across from x. Okay, so those are not the numbers that are across from each other. That's a 15, a number, and a variable. So we are looking at the 10 and the 12. Those are the numbers that are across from each other. We're going to multiply those, and then we are going to divide by the remaining number. So it will look like this. 10 times 12 divided by 15. It's important that we do the multiplication before the division with these questions. So 10 times 12 is 120, and 120 divided by 15 is equal to 8. So our solution is that x is equal to 8. We're going to check our work by substituting the value of 8 into that e equation, which is um, equivalent fractions. Is 12 over 15 equal to 8 over 10? Well, good way to check is to use cross multiplying. Is 10 times 12, or 12 times 10, equal to 15 times 8. When we multiply those numbers, we both get 120 on both sides of the equal sign. Our work is correct. We've successfully solved when x is in the upper right-hand corner. Yay, good job. Now let's look at a question where x is in the bottom left-hand corner. We are going to follow the same exact steps. We'll multiply the numbers that are across from each other and divide by the other number that's remaining. Notice the 9 is across from the variable x. So that's not where we're starting. We are going to start out by multiplying 18 times 10, which is our numbers that are across from each other. And then we are going to divide by the remaining number. We've used 18, we've used 10, 9's the one that's left. So it's going to look like this. x is equal to 18 times 10 divided by 9. 18 times 10 is 180. 180 divided by 9 leaves us with 20. That's our solution. x is equal to 20. Now I'm going to show you another way of checking your work. Um, one way that you can check your work is by reducing fractions to the lowest terms. The lowest terms is when you get a fraction where there's no, um, no common factor between the top number and the bottom number. So what we're going to do is reduce 10 over x is equal to 9 over 18. First off, we'll substitute x into the fraction equation. 10 over 20 is equal to 9 over 18. We're going to reduce these fractions to lowest terms. This is one method for actually solving these questions, but it's also a method for us being able to check our work. We divide the top and the bottom number by our greatest common factor of 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2. So the fraction of 10 over 20 in lowest terms is 1 half. That makes sense. 10 out of 20 is half. Let's look at the other one, 9 out of 18. You're probably saying to yourself, 9 out of 18, I know that that's also half. But we'll show the work. We'll divide both the top and bottom by 9, our greatest common factor, leaving us with 1 half or 1 over 2. If the, uh, if the fractions in lowest terms are equal to each other, then the fractions are equivalent. That's another way that you can check your work. You can always do this to check your work and see if they are equivalent fractions. Because if they are equivalent, they will reduce down to lowest terms to being the same thing. Good job. In our final question, we're going to look at what happens when we've got x in the upper left-hand corner here on our equation, our fraction equation. Well, which numbers are across from each other? because that's what we're looking for. We're going to multiply the numbers that are across from each other. 24 is across from 12, so we'll multiply that. 
then we're going to divide by the number that's left. So our equation will look like this. x is equal to 24 times 12 divided by 36. 24 times 12 gives us 288. 288 divided by 36 is equal to 8. Hey, that's a good number. Let's write our answer way up top here. x is equal to 8. We're going to substitute that into our equation. And this time we'll solve using, let's do cross multiplying. That's always fun. Cross multiplying to solve our work. We're going to put our work up here. 8 times 36 and 24 times 12. Let's see what we get. 288 on both sides of our equal sign. That tells us that we've done the work correctly. Also, one extra note, if you chose to reduce these down to lowest terms, both of them are equal to one third. So that's another way that we could have checked and solved our work. That's why I call this a check and our double check. Good job. Quick recap. Cross multiplying will always work. There are other methods for solving equations like this, but cross multiplying will always work. Whether the x is in the lower right hand, or the lower left side, or the upper left side, or the upper right side, it doesn't matter where our variable is, you can always solve using cross multiplying following the same exact steps. So I hope this method has been helpful for you. I hope the lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.